Welcome to part 4 of the Mongoose Hello World series. In this part, we're going to build onto our items facility to enable us to add an image for each of our items. And then we'll wrap up by building an orders facility that will allow users to place orders in our store. You might have noticed I changed the button styling back to the N4 default theme instead of having the red button that we changed in part 1. To do that, go to View, User Preferences, and select the Runtime Layout tab. Make sure the N4 theme is selected and click the Edit button. Select Button and in the background color drop down, select None at the top. Click OK back to the form. OK, to import an image for each of our items in our store, we first need to add a new column to our items table. Up to this point, we've used the new data maintenance wizard to create our tables, forms, and IDOs. But in real development, you'll often work from your existing objects. Open the SQL Tables form and click OK to the prompt. It opens with an initial command of filter in place. Type items in the table name box and press F4 to query the items table. Click the Columns button, which opens the Columns form that allows us to edit the columns on the items table. Press Ctrl N to create a new column named Picture. In the Data Type dropdown, type VAR and press F2 to drop the list and select VAR Binary. The length is negative 1, make this nullable, and save. Now that we've added the picture column to the items table which will store our image, we need to create a property class that publishes access to the picture column. It's a good idea to leverage our inheritance model here, so we'll start by adding a property class. Open the IDEO property classes form, and I'll open it from the most recently used form list, and then press F3 to clear filter in place. Press Ctrl N to create our picture property class. The data type is binary, the length is negative 1, the column data type is var binary, Set the label string ID to S picture, and then in the binary format field, type PNG. Save and press Ctrl U to unload the metadata cache. When we do this, we'll be asked to save our changes to themes because we changed the background color of our buttons. Click Yes. With the property class created, we can create the picture property that we'll derive from our picture property class. We'll bind that property to the picture column that we added to the items table. Open the IDO collections form by going to Form, Open, and type IDO, and then arrow down to the IDO collections form, and press Enter to open it. It opens in filter in place mode, and we want to query the items IDO, so type items in the IDO name edit, and press F4 to execute filter in place. Then click on the New Property button. So far we've created all of our IDOs by using the new data maintenance wizard, and all of the properties we've created have been bound to columns on tables. Another way of creating a property on an IDO is to use this IDO collections form. Here we can see the types of properties we can create. Bound is selected by default, so click Next, and in the Bind To combo box, drop the list, and select the picture column. The property name defaults to picture, and in the Property Class field, type PIC, and then press F2 to select the Picture Property Class, and then click Finish. Now that we have everything in place to allow us to import and display an image for our items, we need to have a button on the Items form to import and display the item's image. Press Ctrl U to clear the cache, and open the Items form. We can repurpose the button we created in Part 3. Enter Design Mode, Select Site Default for the editing scope, and click OK to the prompt. I'll make the form a little bit bigger, and then resize the grid by selecting it and dragging the bottom down. Now we can select the button, expand data source, and in the binding field, click the ellipsis. The type is Property and then click the Edit button. 
and select the Items collection. Forms can have an arbitrary number of collections of data, but here we just have one which is the primary collection named Items. For the property, select the Picture property and click OK back to the form. And we get a prompt letting us know that we'll need to save and rerun the form for this binding to take effect. Press the Save and Close button and go ahead and close all of these remaining forms we have open since we won't be needing them. Next, select the Items form from the most recently used form list. We have three more things to do to get this fully operational. The first thing is to create the string as picture. Then we need to make our button generate an event when it's pressed, named Import Picture. And finally, we need to create an event handler to handle the Import Picture event. To create our string, enter Design Mode and select the button. In the Properties panel, expand Inheritance, and in the View Attributes Inherited from Property field, click the ellipsis. Click the Label Text button, and then respond Yes to create the string. Click OK to accept the string value of Picture, and then click Done. Now that we have our string created, we can move on to creating the event in the Event Handler. With the button still selected, click on the Events tab and change the name of the primary event from Green to Import Picture. Now when the button is pressed, the event named Import Picture will be generated. Now all that's left is to create an event handler to handle the event that our button generates. Click the ellipsis to open the Event Handlers window, and then click New to create the new event handler. The Event to Handle defaults to Import Picture and then set the event handler response type to binary value action. Then in the parameters field, click the ellipsis. And then click type specific parameters and select import for the action. In the component bound to binary value property dropdown, we want to select the button on our form, which is named button one. We can click okay back to the form and then save. Enter run mode and let's test our button out. Press the button and we see an open file dialog asking for PNG images. Remember that on our picture property class, we specified a binary data format of PNG. We're using that inherited value here, so Mongoose knows what types of files we're storing in our binary value. I'll select the PNG image of a barbell from my desktop and we see that the image is displayed on the button and we can tell that this row is marked Modified by this orange diamond. At this point, pressing Save saves the binary value back into the database. We can select the remaining items and import images for those too. Select the bike row, then press the button, and double-click the bike PNG. Next select the eggs row, press the button, and double-click the Eggs PNG, and do the same thing for the Guitar Row. When you're done importing the images, remember to save. This is one of many uses of images that Mongo supports, where a binary property is image data. I'll enter Design Mode and make the button bigger so we can see the image more clearly. Okay, let's move on to another IDO capability. Mongoose allows us to join and utilize data from multiple tables. Our items facility has a reference to units of measure, but in cases like this, you'll often want to display other fields from that reference. In this particular case, in addition to the two-character unit of measure code, we'd like to also show the unit of measure description on our items form. This would effectively show us dozen and each, instead of just DZ and EA. Save and close the items form and let's do that. Open the IDEO Collections form from the most recently used form list and type items into the IDEO name field and then press F4 to query the items IDEO. Click the New Table button and in the Table Name dropdown, type UM and press F2 to select the UM's table. The table alias defaults to UMS, which is what we want. Below we can select the columns for the join. Select UM equals items UM. Click Add 
and then click OK to take us back to the IDEO Collections form. We need to create a new property on our Items IDEO that will publish access to the Description column joined from the UMs table. Click the New Property button to create our property. Bound is selected by default, which is what we want, so click Next. Drop the list of columns we can bind to, and now note that we see not only the columns on the primary base table, which is the items table, but we also see the UMs table. Select the UMs.description column, but change the name from just description to UMS description. This is the naming convention we recommend, where the table alias is used as a prefix for properties bound to join tables. Click Finish, and press Ctrl U to unload the cache. We just joined the columns, so now let's add the unit of measure description to our form. Open our items form, and enter design mode. In the form panel on the right, click on the collections tab and expand primary collection items. Scroll down to the property we just created called UM's description, which is at the bottom. Click and drag it onto the form. When we clicked and dragged this over, Mongoose created a column on the grid, which is to the left of the splitter, and it also created a static component and an edit component. We can select that static component, which acts as a label, and delete it by pressing the delete key. We don't need a separate UM label in this case. Now we can resize the edit component and move it to the right of the unit of measure combo box. This is the edit that will display our unit of measure description which again is each or dozen. Now we can save and close the items form and then reopen it. Now we can see the unit of measure description to the right of the UM dropdown. Note that if you change unit of measure, the description isn't updated until you save. We could use Mongoose validators and component classes to change this functionality, but for now we're going to move on. Let's look at what just happened on the topology diagram with our new table join. When the load collection IDEO request XML went from WinStudio to the IDEO runtime, the SQL select it generated included a join to the UM table so it could return the description for the unit of measure. To provide drill down from items to units of measure, we'll use a property class extension. Remember that property class extensions are another level of the inheritance model. Enter design mode, and select the UM combo box. In the Properties panel, expand Inheritance, and we can see that this is inheriting attributes from the property class UM. Now we're going to create the property class extension. Click the ellipsis in the field that reads Edit Property Class Extension, and respond yes to the prompt to create the extension. Property class extensions, like the name suggests, provides opportunities to extend a property class. We can add additional UI-oriented attributes that'll be inherited on the components which are bound to IDEO properties derived from the property class that the property class extension is extending. Under the Behavior heading, expand Add Details and Find Forms. In the Add Details field, drop the list and type UMS to select our UMS form. Do the same for the Find Form below. Below that, in the Property field, type capital UM to assign the UM property. A few rows down in the right-click menu field, select Standard Details, Add Find. Click OK and save. Well, we just created a property class extension on the UM property class, which is going to provide us with a different right-click menu. But go to Run Mode and right-click on the UM combo. We still see the default right-click menu which contains copy, help, paste, and cut. Why is this? Well, because our right-click menu is here on the property class extension level, it's possible that it's being overridden either on the component class level or on the component level. Since we haven't created a component class, it's a safe bet that it's being overridden here on the component level, so let's check that out. Enter design mode and select the UM combo box. Expand the Behavior section of the Properties panel, and we can see that the standard default right-click menu is assigned here on the component level. All we have to do is clear the right-click menu field, save, 
into run mode and we can test it. Now that there isn't anything assigned on the component level, our property class extension should dictate our right-click menu. Right-click on the UM combo box, and now we see our right-click menu that we assign on the property class extension. Because we assign the UM's form in the add details and find fields of our UM property class extension, Mongoose now has the metadata for providing things like drill down when the user selects details, for example. This functionality will automatically apply to any components that are bound to the properties from the UM property class. Save and close the items form, and also close the IDOs form and let's switch gears. We haven't built anything to allow our customers to actually place an order in our store, so let's finish up by building an orders maintenance facility. Open the IDO property classes form which opens in filter and place mode. Mongoose has built-in check-in check-out capabilities for metadata, which includes IDO property classes. We've been building our app as the SA user, so we can query the property classes that have been created by that particular user. Type SA in the locked by field and press F4 to execute the query. While we're here, let's create a few property classes that we can use in the next step when we use the new data maintenance wizard to build the orders facility. Press Control N to create our property class named Customer ID. The data type is string, the length is 50, the column data type is Enver Care. Assign the label string ID, SID. The domain IDO is customers. The domain property, select ID. And in additional list properties, select name. Press Control N to create the property class order num base. Data type long integer and in the default value field, type auto number, open parenthesis, close parenthesis. Auto number is a WinStudio substitution keyword, which it resolves by querying the next order number from the table, as well as any other data in the collection that hasn't yet been saved to the database. The column data type is int. The label string ID is s order number and justify right. Press Control N again to create the item property class. In the base class dropdown, select item base to inherit the attributes assigned on the item base property class. Then we can add the domain IDO, items, the domain property item, and in additional list properties, select description. And we can save and press Control U to clear the cache. Enter design mode and open the new data maintenance wizard by going to form, definition, new data maintenance. We want to name the form, table, and IDO orders and place the orders IDO into the hello world IDO project. The form type is multi-view and the device type is default. If you're asked at any point in this wizard to create a string, click yes to the prompt and accept the default value. The first attribute is order number. Check the required box. And make this the primary key. And then select the property class we just created called order num base. Click the add row button three times and the next attribute is customer ID. Make this required and select the property class customer ID, which makes the customer ID attribute inherit all of the attributes we defined in the customer ID property class. The next attribute is item. Check the required box and select the item property class to inherit the attributes defined in the item property class. The last attribute is count. With a data type of long integer. And then make the default value one. 
click Next, and Finish. Click OK to the prompt that urges us to be careful when deleting columns and tables, and then we can close the new data maintenance wizard. Notice that our order number is defaulted to 1, and if we add a new order, the order number will increase by 1. This is because we're inheriting the default value, auto number, that we assigned in the property class, order num base. Let's create a few orders. Notice that our customers that we created in part 1, Clark, Chloe, and John, are here in the customer ID dropdown, and their respective customer ID is to the left. The items dropdown contains all of the items that we created at the end of part 2. After you've created a few orders, save your work. In part 5, we'll complete this orders facility, add a few more property class extensions for supporting drill down, and we'll work through a simple example of adding .NET code into our store app. For more tutorials and documentation, visit the Mongoose portal or send us an email at mongoose at